On a cold, moonless night, Ethan began his first shift as a security guard at the old industrial complex on the outskirts of town. The complex, abandoned for years, was rumored to be haunted. But Ethan, skeptical and in need of a job, shrugged off the warnings. As he started his rounds, the eerie silence of the abandoned buildings weighed heavily on him. His flashlight barely pierced the darkness, casting long shadows that seemed to twist and move with each step. Ethan's unease grew when he heard faint whispers echoing through the halls, though no one else was supposed to be on the premises. He reached the central building, known as Block C, where workers had reported the most disturbing occurrences before the place was shut down. Inside, the air was unnaturally cold, and his breath materialized in puffs of white mist. Ethan's heart raced as he walked down the dimly lit corridor, lined with rusted machinery and broken windows. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed from the end of the corridor, and the sound of dragging footsteps approached. Ethan froze, straining to hear over his pounding heart. The footsteps grew closer, then stopped just around the corner. He mustered the courage to approach, flashlight trembling in his hand. As he rounded the corner, he found nothing but an old, overturned chair, relieved but confused. Ethan decided to check the surveillance footage to ensure no intruders were inside. Making his way to the security room, he noticed that the previously locked door was ajar. Inside, the monitor showed static-filled images of the complex, but one screen displayed a live feed of Block C's corridor, where Ethan was just moments ago. He watched in horror as the footage showed him staring at the overturned chair. Behind him, a dark, distorted figure loomed its features obscured, but its intent unmistakably malevolent. Ethan turned to leave, but found the door locked from the outside. Panicking, he turned back to the monitors. The figure was now looking directly at the camera, its face still hidden in shadow, but its eyes glowed with a sinister light. The screen flickered, and the figure disappeared only to reappear on a different monitor, closer to the security room. The cameras went black one by one, until only the camera feed for the room Ethan was in remained. The door behind him creaked open, and the room grew colder. He could feel the presence of something unspeakable behind him, its breath on his neck. And there, the story must pause, waiting to continue its dark tale. Ethan, paralyzed with fear, dared not turn around. The chilling breath grew more intense, as if the entity were whispering silent threats into his ear. With a surge of desperation, Ethan lunged for the door, flinging it open, and sprinted down the hallway, not daring to look back. His footsteps echoed through the empty corridors. A frantic rhythm against the backdrop of oppressive silence. As he navigated the labyrinthine complex, Ethan realized that the layout seemed to shift subtly, corridors elongating and doors vanishing, as if the building itself were alive and toying with him. He stumbled into a large, decrepit warehouse within the complex, where rows of machinery cast grotesque shadows in the dim moonlight filtering through broken windows. Suddenly, the machinery groaned to life, gears grinding and conveyors moving, as if the factory had awoken from a long slumber. The cacophony was deafening, and amidst the din, Ethan heard the whispers again, now louder 
forming words in a language he couldn't understand. But that filled him with an instinctual dread. He spotted an old office on the upper level of the warehouse and made his way to it, hoping to find some means of escape. Inside, he discovered notes and photographs scattered across a dusty desk, detailing the history of the complex. It had been shut down after a series of unexplained accidents and the disappearance of several workers, incidents that were hastily covered up. The photos showed the workers who had vanished, their faces contorted in terror, and in each picture, a shadowy figure loomed in the background, its form blurred, but its menacing presence undeniable. As Ethan examined the notes, he realized that the incidents had all occurred during the night shift, exactly 30 years ago to the day. A sudden silence fell over the complex, the machinery grinding to a halt. Ethan felt a cold draft and looked up to see the shadowy figure from the photographs standing in the doorway of the office, its eyes glowing with malevolence. It pointed at him and then to a wall in the office where faded peeling wallpaper revealed an old sealed door. Compelled by a force he couldn't resist, Ethan approached the door as he touched the handle. Visions of the past flashed before his eyes. Workers running in terror, strange rituals conducted in secret, and the entity, a constant presence, feeding on fear and chaos. The door creaked open, revealing a hidden staircase leading down into darkness. Ethan, with the entity now beside him as if guiding him, descended. The air grew colder, and the oppressive energy thicker as he reached the bottom. Finding himself in an underground chamber lit by flickering torches, in the center of the chamber stood a stone altar, covered in arcane symbols and stained with old, dark marks of what could only be blood. The entity's whispers grew more insistent, urging Ethan towards the altar. As he approached, the events of the past and the horrors that occurred in the complex began to intertwine with his own reality, blurring the lines between the physical world and the nightmare that enveloped it. The chamber seemed to expand and contract rhythmically, like the beating of a giant heart, and the shadows cast by the torches danced frenetically, creating grotesque shapes that merged with the darkness. Ethan, now caught in the web of the entity's influence, stepped closer to the altar, his hand reaching out to touch the cold, ancient stone. The story halts here, leaving Ethan's fate and the true nature of the entity and the complex shrouded in mystery, ready to be unveiled in the next installment. Ethan stood before the pulsating door, its energy surging like a tempest, the entity's whispers, now thunderous roars in his mind. The door's opening revealed not just a physical space, but a portal to the entity's realm, a place where the tortured souls of the past were enslaved to its will, and where reality was twisted into a nightmare. Within this realm, Ethan saw the true form of the entity, a colossal being of darkness, its body a maelstrom of tortured faces and writhing forms, each a soul it had consumed. Its eyes, like black suns, burned into Ethan, offering him power in exchange for his complete surrender. As Ethan peered into the abyss, the boundary between him and the entity blurred. He felt its dark power coursing through him, tempting him with the promise of untold strength, yet at the cost of his humanity. Visions of the complex,
transformed into a citadel of nightmare. Its influence, spreading like a plague, filled his mind. But amidst the darkness, Ethan found a spark of resolve. He remembered the pleading spirits, the pain and terror they had endured. This spark ignited a flame within him, a defiance against the entity's domination. He realized that this power could either be his end or the means to confront the entity. With this newfound strength, Ethan stepped into the portal. The realm around him, a surreal landscape of twisted realities. Here, the laws of physics were mere suggestions, and time looped and stretched in dizzying patterns. He navigated this madness, driven by the need to end the cycle of sacrifice and suffering. The entity, sensing Ethan's resolve, unleashed its minions, distorted beings that were once human, now part of its essence. Ethan faced these horrors, each encounter testing his will and drawing him deeper into the entity's domain. As he journeyed, fragments of the entity's memory merged with his own, revealing its ancient origins, its rise to power through fear and worship, and its ultimate binding to the complex. Ethan understood that the entity was not just a predator, but also a prisoner, bound to the place of its summoning. The deeper Ethan ventured, the more the realm's nightmarish landscape warped around him, trying to confuse and ensnare him. But guided by the echoes of the lost souls, he found his way to the heart of the domain, a cathedral of darkness where the entity's essence was strongest. There, in a chamber pulsing with dark energy, stood the core of the entity's power, a crystallized heart formed from the accumulated suffering and horror of centuries. To destroy the entity, Ethan realized he must shatter this heart, but doing so would unleash the raw, chaotic energy contained within, potentially consuming him in the process. As Ethan approached the heart, the entity manifested before him in full fury, its form so massive and terrifying that it seemed to consume reality itself. It struck at Ethan with tendrils of shadow, each blow a nightmare made manifest, each whisper a promise of eternal torment. Ethan, driven by a mix of fear and anger, fought back with every ounce of his being. His actions guided by the spirits of those who had suffered because of the entity. With each step, he shattered the illusions and barriers the entity conjured until he stood before the heart, the essence of the entity's power and pain. The story hangs in this moment, with Ethan poised to strike at the heart, a decision that could either liberate or damn him, and the world with him, as the battle between human spirit and ancient darkness reaches its climax. Ethan, standing before the heart of darkness, felt the weight of centuries of pain and terror emanating from the crystalline core. The entity, now a towering inferno of malice, loomed over him, its form constantly shifting, a maelstrom of every soul it had devoured. Its voice, a cacophony of screams and whispers, sought to drown Ethan in despair. As the final confrontation unfolded, the chamber pulsed with a sinister light, shadows writhing like living things across its walls. Ethan, his resolve fortified by the countless voices of the tormented, confronted the entity, not just as a lone guard, but as the avatar 
of all those it had wronged. The battle was not just physical, but a clash of wills. With Ethan diving into the very psyche of the entity, experiencing its memories and the endless cycle of its existence, he saw its birth from the collective fears of humanity, its growth fueled by war, sacrifice, and destruction, and its eventual chaining to the complex through the dark rites performed by the cult. With each revelation, Ethan understood that the entity's existence was bound to human emotion. Its power, a reflection of the darkness within the human soul. This knowledge, both a weapon and a burden, allowed him to navigate the twisted reality of the entity's realm, deflecting its assaults and countering its influence. Drawing closer to the heart, Ethan began to perceive the entity's fear, fear of oblivion, of the unknown that awaited it beyond existence. He realized that the entity, despite its power, was driven by the same primal dread that it instilled in its victims. In a decisive move, Ethan reached the heart and, with a surge of every ounce of strength and will, he struck, shattering the crystalline surface. A shock wave of energy erupted, tearing through the fabric of the realm, and the entity howled in agony and rage, its form unraveling as the bound souls within it were released. The chamber collapsed into chaos, the boundaries between realities thinning, creating a vortex of spectral and physical energy. Ethan, at the center, was caught in the storm, his consciousness merging with the entities as it disintegrated. Visions of past, present, and possible futures flooded through him, a torrent of experiences and emotions. He saw the complex through the ages, the myriad lives touched by its shadow, and the possible paths ahead, each branching out from the moment of the heart's destruction. The entity, in its death throes, attempted to consume Ethan's identity, to survive through him. But Ethan, anchored by the human spirit and the collective will of the freed souls, resisted. He pushed back against the entity's despair and malice, striving to end its cycle of fear and dominance. As the battle reached its zenith, the complex began to crumble in the physical world, the buildings groaning and collapsing, as if the entity's hold on them was the only thing keeping them intact. The night sky lit up with ethereal lights, the barriers between worlds shimmering and breaking down. Ethan, now a conduit between the entity and the physical world, stood at the brink of oblivion, his actions at the heart having unforeseen consequences. The fabric of reality itself was at risk, with the potential to either seal away the darkness forever or unleash it upon the world in a new form. The story pauses here, with Ethan in the eye of the cosmic storm, the fate of both the physical and the spectral realms hanging in the balance. His next choice critical to the future of all that exists and all that might yet come to be. In the heart of the storm, with the fabric of reality unraveling around him, Ethan stood as the linchpin between existence and oblivion. The complex, now a nexus of collapsing dimensions, mirrored his internal struggle against the disintegrating entity. The once solid walls of the factory twisted and buckled, merging with scenes of other times and places, 
creating a tapestry of human history, interwoven with the entity's dark legacy. Ethan, his mind stretched across the expanse of the entity's memories and the myriad paths of the future, grappled with the enormity of his decision to destroy the entity entirely could mean erasing a part of the collective human psyche. A dark reflection that perhaps served as a necessary contrast to the light of human virtue. Amidst this chaos, the spirits of those once bound to the entity began to coalesce, forming a beacon of light in the dark storm. They spoke to Ethan, not with words, but through shared memories and emotions, offering him the essence of their combined strength and wisdom. They revealed that the entity's end would not be a simple erasure, but a transformation. A rebirth of the energy that had been twisted by fear and malice. Ethan realized that the entity's power, derived from human emotions, could be repurposed. Instead of destruction, he could initiate a metamorphosis, turning the entity's dark energy into a force that could heal the scars it had left on the world. As the entity's form disintegrated around him, its essence became malleable. Ethan, guided by the collective will of the freed souls, began to reshape the entity. This process was not without peril as he had to navigate the volatile core of the entity's being, a place where raw emotions and primal fears churned in a tempest of potential nothingness. The physical realm of the complex served as the battleground for this metaphysical transformation. The crumbling structures began to reform, not as they were, but as manifestations of the entity's evolving essence shaped by Ethan's will and the collective desires of the freed spirits. Ethan's vision for the entity's new form was not of a guardian or benevolent spirit, but as a natural force, neutral and balanced, capable of fostering growth and change rather than stifling it with fear. This vision was a gamble as it required releasing the entity's energy back into the world, but in a way that would diffuse its ability to coalesce into a singular, malevolent force again. As the transformation neared completion, the boundaries between the spectral and physical worlds began to stabilize. The complex, now a labyrinth of architectural impossibilities, stood as a monument to the ordeal, a place where the veil between worlds was thin but balanced. The freed souls, their essence interwoven with the reformed entity, departed, leaving behind a world forever changed. Ethan, no longer just a security guard, but a conduit for this monumental shift, found himself alone in the heart of the complex. The storm of energy and reality calming around him. The night sky cleared, revealing the first light of dawn, which shone upon the complex with a new, hopeful light. The horrors of the past night were over, but the impact of what had transpired would ripple through time and space leaving a legacy that would be felt in ways unseen. The story suspends at this moment of calm and potential, with Ethan at the center of a transformed reality, the future unwritten, but charged with the promise of new beginnings and old endings. The complex stands as a threshold, not just of fear and darkness, but of understanding and renewal, a place where the boundary between the known and the unknown invites the curious and the brave to explore what lies beyond. 
as dawn broke over the transformed complex, Ethan, now weary but enlightened, began to comprehend the full extent of the night's events. The complex, its architecture a blend of the real and the surreal, stood as a testament to the night's struggle. Its walls etched with the narratives of souls and energies that had collided within. Ethan wandered through the corridors, each step revealing more of the metamorphosis that had occurred, rooms and halls, once sights of horror and fear, now pulsed with a vibrant energy, the air tinged with a sense of potential, the entity reborn through his actions had become a tapestry of light and shadow no longer a malevolent force, but a guardian of the threshold between worlds. As he explored, Ethan encountered pockets of reality where time flowed differently, remnants of the entity's former dominion. In these spaces, he saw visions of the complex's past and future, snapshots of lives touched by the place. Workers, researchers, and adventurers walked these halls in different eras, each affected by the complex's shifting nature. Ethan realized that his actions had not only transformed the entity, but also anchored the complex in the fabric of the world as a place of power and mystery. It was a nexus for those who sought to understand the deeper realities of existence, a site where the veil between the natural and the supernatural was thin. As the sun rose higher, Ethan found his way to the central chamber, where the heart of the entity once pulsated with dark energy. Now, it was a serene atrium, bathed in sunlight, with plants and trees growing in wild abundance, a living heart in place of the cold stone altar. Here, Ethan encountered other beings, not quite human, but not spirits either. They were the custodians of the new entity, manifestations of its will to protect and nurture the balance between worlds. They spoke to him not with words, but through impressions and feelings, conveying gratitude and acknowledgement of his role in the transformation. The complex, they revealed, would now serve as a sanctuary and a beacon, attracting those with the sensitivity to perceive the deeper currents of reality. Ethan was offered a choice, to return to his former life with the knowledge of what he had experienced forever changing his perception of the world, or to stay and become a guardian of the complex, guiding others who would come seeking its mysteries. As Ethan pondered this choice, the complex seemed to await his decision. The very walls and floors resonant with the anticipation of his role in the ongoing story of this place. Outside, the world went about its business unaware of the monumental shift that had occurred within the confines of the old industrial complex. The narrative pauses here, with Ethan standing at the crossroads of his destiny, the complex a bridge between the ordinary and the extraordinary, its future intertwined with his decisions, ready to unfold in a myriad of possibilities. The story of the night shift guard who faced the darkness and emerged as a key figure in the balance of cosmic forces is far from over, with many chapters yet to be written in the saga of the complex and its place in the tapestry of reality. Ethan, standing in the heart of the transformed complex, felt the weight of his choice. The custodians of the entity, ethereal beings born from its reformed essence, 
awaited his decision with a serene patience. The complex itself seemed to hold its breath, its walls and floors alive with the energy of new beginnings and ancient secrets. As he contemplated his options, Ethan's mind replayed the events of the night, the terror and the revelations, the battles fought in the shadowy realms of fear and power. The complex, once a place of industrial decay and dark history, had become a living symbol of transformation, its every corner resonating with the echoes of the past and the promise of the future. Choosing to stay, Ethan accepted his new role as a guardian of the complex, a mediator between the physical world and the mystical realities intertwined with the fabric of the place. The custodians, acknowledging his decision, merged with the environment, their forms dissipating into streams of light that wove through the air, infusing the complex with a gentle, watchful energy. Ethan's new existence was not one of solitude. The complex, now a beacon in the realm of the supernatural, attracted seekers, scholars, and the spiritually attuned, drawn by the tales of the night when reality itself was reshaped. Each visitor brought their own story, their own energies, adding layers to the complex's ever-evolving narrative. The complex served as both sanctuary and challenge, its mysteries deepening, revealing new paths and secrets. Ethan, with his unique connection to the entity and the complex, guided the visitors, helping them navigate the delicate balance between curiosity and respect for the forces at play within the walls. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months. The complex grew in reputation, becoming a focal point for those studying the paranormal, the arcane, and the interstitial spaces where different realities converge. Ethan encountered other guardians in time, individuals who had experienced their own transformative encounters with the unknown, and who had been drawn to the complex as he had been. Together, they explored the deeper levels of the complex, where the fabric of reality was thin, and the remnants of the entity's old domain still lingered. These areas were volatile, with the potential to unleash chaos if not carefully managed. The guardians worked to seal these rifts, to prevent the dark history from repeating, while also harnessing the energies to strengthen the barrier between worlds. The complex also became a place of healing and learning. People who had been touched by the supernatural, bearing scars from encounters with the darker aspects of reality, came seeking understanding and solace. Ethan and his fellow guardians offered guidance, helping them integrate their experiences into their lives, turning trauma into knowledge and fear into strength. Yet, beneath the day-to-day -day activities and the growth of the complex as a center of supernatural learning and healing, there lurked unanswered questions and unresolved mysteries. The entity, though transformed, was a being of immense age and depth, its past intertwined with the fabric of human history and emotion. Ethan, during his explorations and meditations, encountered hints of other entities, other realms beyond the immediate influence of the complex suggesting a vast network of cosmic forces, of which the entity was but a part. The guardians began to realize that their role was not only to protect and manage the complex, but also to understand its place within a larger cosmic tapestry. 
the story unfolds further, revealing the complex as a microcosm of the larger universe, a point where lines between different realities converge. Ethan, once a simple night shift guard, now stood as a key figure in a cosmic play that spanned beyond time and space. His journey with the complex, only the beginning of a deeper exploration into the unknown and the mystical, where each discovery led to more questions. Each answer uncovered layers of greater mysteries. Ethan's role as a guardian deepened. His connection to the complex and the entity becoming an integral part of his being. The guardians, including Ethan, discovered that the complex was not just a physical location, but a focal point of cosmic ley lines, channels of mystical energy that crisscrossed the earth and connected to other dimensions and realities. As the guardians delved deeper into the mysteries of the complex, they uncovered ancient artifacts and relics, remnants of the cult that had originally summoned the entity and of other, even older civilizations that had understood and harnessed the power of these ley lines. These artifacts held clues to the workings of the cosmos and the balance of mystical forces that governed reality. Ethan, through his interactions with these relics and his explorations of the complex's shifting realities, began to experience time non-linearly. Past, present, and future melded into a single continuum in his perception, revealing the complex's history and its potential futures. He saw the rise and fall of empires, the birth and death of stars, and the flow of cosmic energies that influenced the fate of all existence. The Guardians faced challenges not only from within the complex, but also from external forces drawn by its power. Occultists, power-hungry corporations, and entities from other dimensions sought to control the complex's energies. Each confrontation tested the Guardians' resolve and their understanding of the complex, pushing them to master the entity's transformative powers and to fortify the complex against intrusions. Ethan's journey took a pivotal turn when, during a meditation in the deepest part of the complex, he encountered a consciousness that dwarfed even the entity in its power and scope. This ancient presence, amorphous and vast, communicated with Ethan, offering glimpses of the cosmic web that connected all forms of existence, with the complex as a vital node in that web. This presence, neither benign nor malevolent, but embodying the pure essence of existence, revealed that the complex was a crucible for the evolution of consciousness, a place where physical and metaphysical forces converged to birth new realities. The Guardians, and Ethan in particular, were not just protectors, but also shepherds of this evolutionary process. As Ethan grappled with these revelations, the nature of his relationship with the complex and the entity evolved. He realized that his role was not merely to guard, but to facilitate the growth and expansion of the complex's influence, guiding the flow of energies to ensure the safe progression of this cosmic evolution. The Guardians established deeper connections with other nodes of power across the Earth and beyond, forming a network of custodians who safeguarded the balance of mystical forces. They encountered beings of light and darkness, entities and spirits, each playing a role in the grand tapestry of existence. 
and each interaction provided Ethan and the Guardians with greater insight into their role in the universe. As the complex's influence grew, it became a beacon for seekers of truth, a pilgrimage site for those drawn to the mysteries of existence, the Guardians, once defenders against darkness now stood as guides and mentors in a world awakening to the broader reality of the multiverse. The story now hovers on the brink of a new era, with Ethan and the Guardians at the forefront of a shift in cosmic consciousness. The complex, once a place of industrial decay and dark rituals, had become a hub of spiritual and cosmic significance its halls echoing with the footsteps of beings from countless realities, each drawn to its power and potential. The narrative continues to unfold, with each chapter revealing more of the infinite complexities of the cosmos, the role of the Guardians ever evolving, and the journey of Ethan, from a night shift guard to a key figure in the cosmic saga only beginning to reveal the depths of his destiny and the true nature of the complex.